have eight kids, but also from the fact of what I saw as a county prosecutor. I run for attorney general because I know I can do a better job than the current attorney general. I think it's important for the attorney general to have been a county prosecuting attorney or have some background in going into court and prosecuting criminals because that is an essential part. It's not the only part. And I'm not saying the attorney general is the top cop or anything else. Not, no. We are support. We are there to help the people who do the job every single day. But if we don't do our job, they can't do their job. So I have a real passion for this. I want to fix the crime lab. I want to change it. Uh, I also want to do other things. Uh, I think that the Attorney General can help the business climate of the state. Uh, let, let me talk about that. Uh, the Attorney General represents every single state agency in the state. I will follow the law. I had no problem as a prosecuting attorney taking people to the grand jury to indict them, filing charges, filing suits. I have no problem doing that. But I learned as a county prosecutor that everybody that comes in your office that wants a charge doesn't get a charge. And ultimately, the buck stops with me. I think we have filed too many lawsuits in society today. I think the government files too many lawsuits. I think the attorney general's job is not just to be another lawyer who takes a client and the client comes in, in this case a bureaucrat, and the bureaucrat says, I want to file charges against X business over here, X little small machine shop or something, and you just, you're the order taker and you do it. That's not how I see the job. My job will be to say, look, aren't there other ways we can solve this? Let's fix the problem, but government should be there to work with business and help business, except in the cases where you have real bad actors and people who just, you got to hit. <laughs> I mean, you just got to go do it. And so it's an attitude. It's a culture. Uh, and that will be my attitude. Uh, a third issue that I care about, and clearly that uh, my opponent and I disagree, on uh, is his advice that he gave uh, and what he told uh, PERS and the other state retirement systems when eight newspapers in this state who were, who were writing a very beneficial articles about what our problems are with PERS and wanted more facts and they made a request it was a very limited request and the request was we want information but we don't want names, and we don't want addresses, we don't want social security numbers, but we want information. Current Attorney General said, no. He, he said, don't give them that information. Now, Richard, when he comes in here, will tell you, well, that's my reading of the law. And I respect that. I understand that. But I think what he's missing is the Ohio Supreme Court decisions, which tell you how to interpret the law. And the Ohio Supreme <coughs> Court has not always cited uh, on behalf of the news media, it wants something. But they've been very clear. And what they have said is very simple. If it's a close call, the doubt goes clearly to open records and the information coming out. I would have come down with a different decision. I've looked at the cases. I've looked at the law. My advice to the, to the PDRS and state teachers retirement, et cetera, would have been, you must release this information. We have another disagreement in regard to Obamacare. Um, I don't like it. I think it's going to be very destructive of jobs in the state of Ohio, particularly with small businesses. I've traveled the state and talked to small business. That's what I, I clearly have found. There are hidden taxes in it in the day. I think the bill is a disaster. But that is not enough reason for the Attorney General to join in a lawsuit against Obamacare. But what is enough reason is I think it's unconstitutional. I think that it stretches the Commerce Clause far beyond any before. And again, uh, you know, Richard and I have a, a disagreement. But I, it, I think it stretches it beyond anything that we've seen. I think that it is a problem uh, of constitutional, constitutional uh, level for the federal government to compel someone as, as a, become a, to be a citizen of this country. To live in this country, you have to buy a specific product. Now, we all think that, I think most of us think, we need health care reform. No one likes a lot of things that are going on in health care today. But this bill went too far, and it's, it's, it is simply counterproductive. One Supreme, I'm sorry, one district court judge who has looked at this, there are actually two lawsuits that have been filed. One is a Virginia case, and one is 20 other states. Uh, the judge in Virginia, and, interesting name, Henry Hudson. Here's what he said about it. 
uh, and he's not made a he's not made a final decision. But this is a preliminary move by Obama administration to dismiss it. Here's what he said. Uh, this bill literally forges new ground and extends the Commerce Clause powers beyond the current high water mark. Also, another quote, no reported case from any federal appellate court has ruled that Congress has the power to regulate a person's decision not to purchase a product. That's a federal, federal judge in, in Virginia. So, Richard will tell you that it's a weak case. He will tell you that, or at least initially he said, he's moved a little bit away from Initially he said, I know that this is constitutional. I would submit there's no one in this country knows whether it's constitutional or not until nine members of the United States Supreme Court tell us. And they eventually will tell us, and I think it'll probably be a five, five or four vote. I think Ohio has an obligation to become involved. Uh, he will make the argument when he comes in, well, it's a waste of tax dollars. Well, I think Ohio needs to be involved. Ohio has unique needs, unique vantage point, and can be value added. Now, I challenged him in previous debates. I said, are you telling us that Ohio could not have been value added in this lawsuit? And he wouldn't say that we couldn't be. He just said, I, I don't think we should have filed a suit, which I, you know, that's just a, a very legitimate disagreement. That's. So you know, those are some of the reasons, some of the things that, that I want to do. Uh, I'm excited about the opportunity to serve. I think I have a unique uh, and about 20 years on the Judiciary Committee. Uh, when I was Lieutenant Governor of the state, of, and that's in Congress, House and Senate. When I was in Congress, my job, or excuse me, when I was Lieutenant Governor under George Voinovich, my job was to be basically an executive assistant to George for seven departments, and they all had to do it with criminal justice. Uh, my experience as an assistant prosecutor, then my experience as prosecutor, my 11 years on the Senate Intelligence Committee. I think that's that is a very good background to be the Attorney General of the state. Some members of the Tea Party have been critical of that you were part of that group that forced a compromise a year or two ago, and they're, they're saying you don't. Uh, yeah. Thank you for asking me that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that question. Uh, because as I tell, uh, People who ask about that who are Republicans or conservatives, I said, we won, the other guys lost. Uh, we ended up with two United States Supreme Court justices uh, who are conservative uh, and who have been very, who have been consistently conservative at least as long as they've been on, on the Supreme Court. We can't, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but we can assume they will be. We never would have, George Bush never, President Bush never would have been able to put them on the bench. Never could have got them confirmed. Uh, he would have had to go to more moderate, uh, so-called moderates, uh, and he went with two conservatives and did it because we broke that law chain. That's number one. Number two, uh, I think, uh, I, I, I told, explained to people at the time, there will be a day, and it's hard to believe, but there'll be a day when there's a Democrat president of the United States. And there'll be a day when that Democrat president has a majority in the United States Senate. Don't we want to have the opportunity to protect minority rights then just as they've been protected for years and years in the United States Senate with the filibuster. We preserve the filibuster. Uh, we also broke the log jam with the circuit court judges uh, and got most of those circuit court judges through. And so it was, it was a victory. It was something that uh, I'm very proud of. Uh, we worked it out, uh, and we, I think it was very, very helpful. We've gone through our time. We have time for about one more question. Are there any other reforms that you've got in mind? I, I think you have to. BCI. Yeah, you have to go into the office uh, and do, you know, a complete the complete audit, complete management audit, performance audit, uh, as well as a fiscal audit. And you know, I, I certainly will do that. I, I think we have to, as I started, I said at the beginning, we have to reinvent state government. We're facing an $8 billion, I don't tell you in this room, the facts, we're facing an $8 billion shortfall. Everybody who gets elected this year and everybody who takes office uh, in January is going to have to look at their department, their agency, their office, and say, what are we going to cut? What are, what are we going to do? Uh, and it's, it's, it is a question of priorities. No longer is the question, is this something nice that we could do, something good that we can do? The question is, is it essential? and can only state government do it. I happen to think <clears throat> that law enforcement functions are essential, 
uh, it's, a, it's the proper function of government. If there is a function of government, which I believe it clearly is, one of them certainly is protecting people, whether it's national defense on the federal level or, or, or protecting people locally. If you can't do that, I don't know what else you can do. And so we have to focus focus on that. There will be things, and I, I, don't, I can't tell you, I wish I could, but when I get in that office, there will be things we'll cut. And there will be things that are being done today that we, we probably will not be doing because we don't have any choice. And no one in the government, everyone in the government has to have that approach. I 